What is up guys, Sonner from Canadian Rider here. Today we're gonna to be doing the full spark plug change on your Lexus IS250 and IS350 models. As you guys know, in my Lexus IS350, I've just hit over 300,000 kilometers and so has my fiance's Lexus IS250. So today we're gonna to be showing you how to properly go ahead and replace all the spark plugs in the car. Spark plugs are a really important part of your engine. Not only do they control the fuel economy of the engine, but the power delivery as well. It's an integral part of the car because right now it can degrade your fuel economy, your power, your torque, your performance, a lot of these different things. And it's not good that your car is misfiring. It's gonna possibly cause knocking in the engine, a lot of bad things that you don't wanna do. Today we have all the tools necessary to do that. Make sure you guys have gloves. I have these mechanic gloves here. I'll link all these in the description box down below. Also as well, I have my 10 millimeter um, and 12 millimeter ratchets, which you're gonna need and these sockets. That's important as well. You will need a socket or a spark plug socket extension. So this part actually takes out the spark plug. This is the extension to actually get down in there. So you'll need to make sure you have these as well. And then finally, you'll need the Denso. These are the OEM spark plugs. Um, I got six of these. I'll also link these in the description box down below, the ones you need to get. You could get NGK as well. Those are also very good. I've used NGK spark plugs. Um, you wanna make sure that you get either OEM or some really high quality spark plugs for a lot of different reasons. One's they come pre-gapped, so you don't have to worry about the gapping of the spark plug. Number two, if it's OEM made, you know it's of high quality and NGK is also high quality. You wanna stick with that for such an important part of your engine. So we got six NGK spark plugs here as well. I'll link that in the description box down below. And finally, I'm using, I'm gonna use a little bit of this, of this um, grease here, but you need anti-seize. I actually have some copper anti-seize, which is what you need to actually put on the spark plug to make sure that next time you go take it out, it's gonna come out probably really good. But the next time we take out the spark plug is gonna be when this car is about 420,000 kilometers. So, you know, I have actually no doubt that this car will go to that point where it hits 420,000 kilometers. Um, but we wanna make sure that when the time comes, it's easy for the mechanic or yourself to take out the spark plug. So I'm gonna show you guys step-by-step step how we're gonna do this on this Lexus IS250. So the first thing we're gonna do is obviously open up the hood and we're gonna disconnect the negative battery terminal. You wanna make sure you disconnect this battery. That's important, so I'm gonna go ahead and I believe that is on a 10 mil. We're gonna try it out. There you go. Just need a little screwdriver, to get that out. Now you wanna make sure you put this far away from that terminal. So I just shoved it right in there. It's not gonna move anymore. So with the battery disconnected, we're gonna go and actually remove all of the engine coverings because obviously we need access to the engine. So I'll take off the first one here. So this is the main engine covering. Put that aside. And this gives us access right away to the main part of the engine. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is actually just remove this tubing here. And we're gonna make sure we wanna remove all this so we can get access to these spark plugs. So that's what we're gonna do now. So I'm just gonna take my screwdriver here and we're gonna to have to loosen this up here as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unscrew this. So this should just um, pop out essentially um, once we remove the rest of this stuff as well. So I'm gonna undo this clip pull this hose out okay so that was a little harder to remove because this is jammed or seized for me I'm gonna have to deal with that in a second this is seized which is clamping this down to this so that's off we're gonna put that aside now you can actually see here this is where your spark plugs are so this is the passenger side and these are the three cylinders. So this plug, this plug, and this plug. So now these are easily accessible for us. Um, what we can do is we can actually start working on these now and then remove the rest of the, the, the throttle intake or the intake manifold for the engine. But what I wanna show you guys here right now is how we're gonna actually remove these. So the first thing that we're actually gonna do is make sure that we disconnect these connectors to the actual spark plugs. This is the issue when you work on older cars is that a lot of these parts tend to seize up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little screwdriver to help me pull that clip up like so and wiggle this out. There it goes, it's coming out now. I just need some little help with a screwdriver. So it's over the hump now and I just push this up. Okay, so there you go. So put that connector to the side. 
So there you go, you can see this plastic brittle, the plastic broke here. Not a big deal, but you obviously don't want that to happen. This is the actual, the coil. Um, but we're gonna have to take this out and we're going to get access to the spark plug. I have my ratchet, I have my 10 mil, and we're gonna simply put it on here. And we're going to loosen this up. There we go. Okay. Now I'm just gonna unscrew this with my finger. The other thing is make sure that um, you keep all your bolts in like a bin. So some bolts are shorter than others. Um, so you have to make sure exactly where you got the bolt from, you're putting it back in. So now that this is off, now we have access to this plug. So what we're gonna do is simply, you're gonna grab the plug and be gentle about this. You do not want to be super rough about this. You wanna take the plug and it should just slide right off. It's very simple. That's it, okay? Here it is. So this is the this is the actual ignition coil. This is not the spark plug. So this coil actually goes in with the spark plug and the spark plug is down below here. So we're gonna put this aside and you're gonna remember this is the first one on the passenger side bank and then we're gonna remove the rest once we take out this spark plug and replace it. So that's what we're gonna remove. By the way, make sure you see there's a lot of dirt here on the side. Do not mess around with that. You don't want any dirt going in here, very important. All we're gonna do is we're gonna get our socket extension with our spark plug right here, the spark plug um, extension. And we're gonna take our ratchet, our wrench, and we're gonna go down in there and get it. So I'm gonna do that right now. Got my spark plug socket. We're just gonna go in here gently. Okay, you're gonna get in the socket. You're gonna connect it and you're gonna simply loosen. it. Ugh. So there you go, now it's coming out. You know, sometimes these are a little bit um, seized because of the mileage or the age, but here we go, it's coming out. I'm just turning it. Okay. And all that's gonna happen is because of the socket, it's gonna grab onto the spark plug, so it's gonna come out with the socket. Okay, there we go. So we got it and the spark plug's out. So let's examine it. There's quite a bit of wear here. I don't think this was replaced um, for about 120, 130,000 kilometers. And, you know, you look at it, so this is the Iridium plug, the same Denso OEM plug that we're gonna be replacing it with. But you can see there's significant wear in the plug, which has probably caused some performance issues and the misfiring. I don't know if it's actually necessarily this plug that was misfiring, but you can tell by the condition of just this one that, you know, they were due for replacement. Versus our new plug, which is this. So you can see the big difference between new and old right there. So we're just gonna put a bit of anti-seize on the threads, not too much at all. Like this is literally just a thin coating of anti-seize that we wanna put on the threads. That's it. Like nothing major here, guys. Okay. So once those are coated, we're gonna simply put the spark plug back inside. This is the spark plug. It's got the anti-seize on it. We put it back inside of the spark plug socket. We're gonna very gently go back in here and tighten it. We don't wanna over tighten it. Gonna go and hand tighten it as so. Okay. This is a very delicate process. I wanna make something very clear here. If you strip these threads, it's game over. So make sure, like if you're feeling any weird resistance or anything, that, okay, uh, I'm obviously not in the right thread. Like right now, as you see, look at my hands, no pressure. No pressure whatsoever. It's just slotting in here properly right? No pressure. I'm not feeling any crazy resistance, which means the threads are in properly. This is dangerous. So with the spark plug back in here, you're going to take your coil. One thing to do is actually inspect the coil, see if there's any damage or anything. This coil looks like it's in good condition, so that's fine. Um, and we're going to simply put back the coil inside here where it's gonna connect in with the spark plug, as so. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you push it in. It's like kinda of sucks in there, and that's done. So we're gonna replace this bolt, and we're gonna plug this back in, 
and this spark plug is now done. We removed this bolt here, we removed this bolt, and we took off all the connectors for this side of the block, and we're just gonna move these down. Just move it down, just get it out of the way a little bit. That's it, so now we can access this bolt and we have easy access to this bolt as well. So we're gonna remove these two, we're gonna do the exact same steps that we did for this spark plug here, and once we're done that, we're gonna head over to the driver's side. So this is the second plug. As you can see, there's a lot of wear and tear on this plug as well, um, which is why it's probably, um, you're noticing low fuel economy, less power, possibly this is the plug responsible for the misfires, but so far, this is probably worse than the first plug that we pulled out. So now we have all the three of these spark plugs changed. So we had this removed, I put this back on. You can see there's actually a new bolt here. I actually lost this bolt in the process. It fell down in there and we're gonna have to shimmy it out, but I went back to uh, Princess Auto and I picked up the same bolt and have these now bolts all put back in. What we're gonna do now in this next step is we're gonna go ahead and remove this and the intake manifold here and we'll go step by step on how we do that so we can access the driver's side spark plugs and get those changed. So the first thing in this process that we're gonna do is remove the throttle body here. So we're gonna go ahead and take my 10 millimeter. There are four bolts here, one, two, three, four. Then there's a fifth bolt actually here on the side, right inside of here. So we just took off the bolts out of the throttle body. So you see that we're just gonna put the throttle body just right here, we're not gonna touch it. And then we're gonna start removing the lines here to make sure that we can remove this properly. So I'm gonna take off this hose. Okay, so that hose is removed, put that down. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you all the bolts that you need to remove to get this entire piece off. There's an assortment of bolts to do that. You're gonna notice that we took off the one hose here. And we're also gonna take off this connector on the intake manifold, so we take that off. Now, there's gonna be six Allen bolts um, and two additional bolts that you're gonna have to remove around here. So these bolts are consisting of here, these bolts as well. Um, so there's eight in total, you're gonna have to remove them all and I'll walk you through which ones they are exactly. But we're gonna go ahead and remove this first nut right here. And again, very old, it's, you know, that was a little difficult to take off. Um, because obviously these spark plugs haven't been done in a long time. And there's another bolt right here that we're gonna take off. And that's right beside, I'm gonna get my extension to actually clear this a little bit. So I have my extension, get in there, undo this bolt. Okay, make sure you take this off, the bolt doesn't come out. Get that, put it away. Now, the other ones are six Allen bolts. So you're gonna notice that these ones here are different. So these are six Allen bolts and they're across. That's one, two, three over here, four inside of here. Um, I think there's five over there and six. So they're all over here. My five mil Allen head here. So we're gonna start with this one right here. I'm gonna remove this. Make sure you have it nice and firm. You don't want to strip these bolts. And again, that was a little difficult on the first try, but we got it right out. I'm just gonna unscrew the rest of it with my finger and take it out. Make sure you do not drop these. So that's the other one. Again, you wanna make sure, so if you look at me, when you're putting this in, if you feel like, even though this is the five mil Allen and it's nice and tight in there, you may sometimes have to like hammer it. So I actually hammered down this to make sure that the Allen's fully engaged to the bottom of the bolt, or otherwise you're gonna strip this bolt. That's the last thing you wanna do. So try one more time. Again, being cognizant to not strip the bolt. Okay, there we go. And again, these will need a bit of pressure, but as long as you make sure you have the right five mil Allen and it's pushed down all the way into the bolt head, it's not gonna strip. I have two left. We have these two. So these two were the ones that were being a little difficult. So what again I'll do is, I'll take out the five mil, I'll put it in, and as you can see, there's a little bit of wiggle here, right? See, it's just, it's just not going all the way deep in. I'm gonna take a hammer. I'm gonna hammer this in lightly. All we're trying to do is make sure that it's fully seated. 
Make sure it's fully seated. Okay. Now we're gonna take here, and I'm not gonna use the extension on this just to break it loose. I'm gonna try to just break it loose without the extension. Okay, I'm gonna put pressure down and we're gonna turn this. You can see it right here and let's see if it turns. Okay, there we go. So it's turning, it's free. It is free now, you see that. So again, just making sure not to strip, not to strip the bolt. Now I'm just gonna take this Allen out of the socket. It's great, I'm gonna put the extension back on. Extension's back on and I'm just gonna hand release it as so. I'm gonna have to get rid of this bolt. Okay, and the bolt's out. And this one you can tell isn't as stripped, right? This one's actually in great shape. It's not stripped at all. Quick little tip, we were using this five millimeter um, Allen bolt that I had, but the problem is on the sixth one that's deep in here, there's a little plastic covering, a housing that this black piece doesn't actually fit through. So I've had to put that away and I have a different five mil Allen that I'm using that has a thinner profile so it can actually access it and go fully inside of the um, bolts because it wasn't actually going inside of the bolt and I wasn't able to remove it. So I'm using this instead now. I did put some WD-40 in there as well. And okay, now I feel that I have made the connection here. Now I'm just gonna make sure I put pressure down again, like always and remove. There are three bolts that you need to remove on this side. So the bolts, the first thing you wanna do is remove this connector here. It's a very simple, just remove this connector. It's not a big issue. The other, the issue is, is that behind this hose, and I'm flashing the light here, and I already took out the bolts, but let me move it with the screwdriver so you can get a better sight of it. There's that. You see that? That's a 12 millimeter. So you're gonna need someone to um, push this hose out a bit and access it and remove this 12 millimeter right by this module here on the intake manifold. So again, if you kind of zoom out of this, you can see this is your intake. You're gonna remove this plug. You're gonna kind of come here. You're gonna to have to remove move this hose to get into this 12 millimeter spot, which is over there. The other bolt that you're gonna to need to remove is this fuel line, which is also a 12 mil. So I took off this bolt already, 12 mil bolt. And now the hardest part, or the part that's the most challenging is, there's another bolt all the way back here. It's really tough for me to show you guys with the camera, but you'll see it. It's a 12 millimeter bolt, and it's not that what I'm pointing at. Um, it's really hard to show you, but there is a 12 mil right on the side, and it's the last thing that holds the intake manifold. So we're actually gonna go in there um, and just remove that. Then that's all the bolts removed on this side. So once you have all these bolts removed on this side, all you have to do is really take off the intake manifold. It should basically just slide off. There shouldn't be any you know, difficulty in removing it. Once you remove it, you'll have access to the three ignition coils um, with the spark plugs that you can remove. It's really simple. All you're gonna do is take the exact same steps as I showed you with the first three um, spark plugs. You're gonna replace those with the Denso Iridium spark plugs that you have or the NGKs, and you're gonna have to button everything back up together. So this is really important. You basically just did an entire spark plug change for your car. This is gonna help improve the fuel efficiency of your car, the performance, the power, and really extend the life of the car. So at this point here, because again, these are Iridium plugs, these are the best plugs you could buy, these are probably gonna last me about 120,000 kilometers, so I won't be needing to replace these up until, in my case, 420,000 kilometers. This is going to really make sure that your engine's firing well, and it's going to make sure you have a long life ahead of the car. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment box down below, and make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much. We're at 20,000 subscribers. Um, I really hope this helped you um, in protecting and maintaining your car. I love this Lexus, the Lexus IS250 and Lexus IS350 are really amazing cars. And just a note, this is for the Lexus IS250 specifically, but the steps can be taken. It's almost identically the same to the Lexus IS350. The only thing is with the Lexus IS350 is that you do not have to take off the intake manifold. And thank you guys so much. I really hope this video helped you. Again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment box down below. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.